Hey guys, uh, here I am under the STI. Just wanted to do a quick video uh, to share some slight modifications on my oil temperature sensor setup um, based on some things that I've experienced the past uh, couple track days. So originally, uh, before I have gotten my Mishimoto oil cooler, I went ahead and I tracked the car uh, with a sandwich plate adapter and that sandwich plate adapter right above the filter uh, I had a temperature sensor and an oil pressure sensor. I went ahead and I tracked the car and towards the end of the night uh, running the car in uh, sport sharp mode full boost, boost um, uh, I was seeing temperatures around 250 degrees uh, for the oil the water was spiking up to 220. Now, I came to realize that I had a small leak uh, on this particular hose. It was leaking from here. Uh, I did a poor job uh, originally cutting this down to size. Uh, I'm running a Mishimoto X-Line uh, radiator, which by the way, I love. It's very efficient. Now that I fixed the leak and I tracked the car, my temperatures don't go above 100 and and 95 201 degrees for a few seconds down the straightaway um, and that's in sport sharp if I if I track the car on regular boost levels um, you know um, intelligent mode or so the car is at 197 98 the most so um, I think that a lot of my cooling uh, issues that time were related to a small leak that I had here now that it has been um, repaired I tracked the car and the water temperature was, like I said, fantastic, no problems at all. Now, between the first track time where I was monitor monitoring temperatures in the sandwich plate and the most recent one, uh, what I did is I was using this Killer B uh, Motorsports. It's basically a drain plug that's been tapped to receive a 1.8 national pipe tread sensor. and I had disconnected, um, I had it connected, I should say, here on the drain plug. So uh, that's the way that Killer B recommended, and a lot of people swear by this uh, position of oil temperature, I guess, sampling. Um, and what, did, what that did was, um, number one, I eliminated my Fumoto valve, which, by the way, I love this thing, guys. Uh, I run it in previous cars in the past, and, and it just makes draining oil very, very easy. Um, but anyhow, I was taking temperatures here from the from the pan and I noticed that they wouldn't go above 180 degrees or 185 degrees. Um, I had already run the oil cooler and temperatures coming out of the cooler were at about 150 degrees or so. Uh, how do I know? I'm monitoring also the outport or the outline of my oil cooler and I'm logging all those parameters on my, on my dash. So anyway one of the things that I've decided to do this time around is um, so I went back to keeping my Fumoto valve for now since I'm not going to be using the the drain plug there um, so and I love and I love that I'm gonna keep it that way for now but what I've done is now I've gone and I've taken and I've installed the original sandwich plate from Mishimoto which is trying to touch it right here on my finger so you guys can see it this is black piece here and I'm gonna try to squeeze in there so you can see maybe from this side there you go my temperature sensor there so it has a line and obviously runs back to the car and what will happen is the reason why I'm doing that is in conversations and, and with several people that uh, are running oil temperatures and even with with the guys from uh, Killer B is that the oil temperature here in the sump is always going to be quite a bit cooler than uh, what's about to go into the motor on a Subaru um, or in any other car for that matter which has a heat exchanger like the Subaru does so uh, I consider that this is a very good average point for those that are basically daily driving their car and just want to have a good baseline but if you really want to know performance wise I believe uh, based on what I've seen that you want to sample the oil 
right before it goes into um, you know into the engine so to talk a little bit about that the Subarus are equipped with a right here on my finger I'm trying to point it out um, a basically what's known as or it's called an oil cooler uh, liquid to liquid oil cooler but in reality is it's more of a heat exchanger device and what it does is it, it essentially warms the oil when the car is cool and allows for the oil to come up to temperature quicker which is at one point I wanted to remove it but I'm going to be keeping it there uh, because I think that's beneficial to have the car warm up a little bit sooner or quicker and at the same time what it'll do is it'll as the oil comes up from the sump through the pump and down the cooler or the warmer or exchanger let's use that term from now on it'll either cool it or heat it up a few degrees then it'll go down into uh, the sandwich plate adapter where I have my temperature sensor so I'll be getting a reading past the exchanger and that is the temperature that will either go right through the filter back into the engine or in this case depending on the thermostat that I'm running at that time will channel through one of these hoses go into the oil cooler cool come back in up the filter and go which is also the reason why I am keeping an eye on the temperature of the oil coming out of the cooler um, one of the things that I'm trying to figure out right now is what type of uh, temperature on or what type of thermostat to run I'm running the 180 Fahrenheit uh, model at the, at the moment and I and I kind of feel that it's a little bit cooler for 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 me right now especially with temperatures just going a little bit lower here in Florida than what they typically are um, so I might I may want to switch to the 200 variant and watch those temperatures ideally um, I want to be able to see the temperature going into the engine at all times regardless that's going to be passing going into the cooler and going out and this setup allows me to do so um, this particular port that you see that it's capped off uh, ideally I would want to put the temperature sensor there but it's not this cavity when you take the filter out the wall it's not thin enough or it's not thick enough really to receive the sensor before it collides with the center ring that, that, that holds the adapter that's holding this whole assembly so this is no good they shouldn't even bother putting this on um, it might work for a pressure sensor but I am I'm using another location for that at the moment uh, I'm tapping uh, the block now where the factory um, where the factory sender was so and I'm happy with that location it doesn't bother me less wires under the car so uh, right now I have a wire coming out here it comes from the engine bay behind the firewall and I'm just gonna zip tie this like so um, again that goes back there let me see if I can get you guys a better angle okay something like that so it's here back here somewhere I can see it and I'll just run the car like this for a day or so make sure nothing is leaking and, and the other thing that I'm kind of happy about is that by adding the spacer, uh, the filter didn't really extend uh, too much far below than, than the oil pan per se. It's actually pretty much level with this. So if I were to put a piece of wood or a, or a, or a member here to kind of show you, it's maybe we'll use my paper towels. It's pretty much level, so it's not protruding below. That was one of my biggest concerns in trying to run this setup in the past. Uh, now I haven't tested putting the cover on but I'm sure I may have to modify uh, maybe cut a little circle around here to 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 um, to account for the filter I don't know yet I do know that for these wires um, I do have to cut a portion of that so I'll be looking into doing that in the next few days uh, at least on this side and uh, that's it so uh, so far the fitment is pretty good it fits great um, so uh, yeah let's see let's see what happens I'm hoping to get higher readings here closer to the 200 range uh, which is more or less what I was getting before and uh, that'll be fine uh, just uh, like I said I, like I said before I think my biggest problem was the the coolant uh, in the past and and again so keep in mind this is not a bad location 
Uh, it's actually a great location to get an average uh, of what's coming out of the engine and what's mixing with uh, whatever oils here. So it's always going to be cooler. And uh, you know, if I go to compare between the first time where I had the sensor the way it is now and a few weeks ago when I was having running it down here, there's a difference of about 20 to 30 degrees Fahrenheit, um, which is substantial. So it gives you a good average. It doesn't give you what's going to go right into the engine um, at that point. So again, you're getting a lot of a lot of mass here that's mixing with oil. So it's um, like I said, it's a good average. It's just not what I want at the moment. So I'm going to go back to to here. This will read warmer. Uh, but I'm hoping that next track event with the cooler and the revised um, uh, hose installation that I've done that the oil doesn't go up as high. I do expect it to go up to 230, 240, but not above that. And I'm also expecting that the temperatures, uh, you know, coming out of the, the cooler do get a little bit warmer once I switch out the thermostat. Uh, in case you're wondering, you guys want to see where the sensor is, I'll show you. It's up here in the nose of the car. Um, so there's the line. And I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but there's a, there's a sensor there. Let me see. It's, it's probably not visible from any of these, these areas. Um, but uh, next time I pull out the bumper, I'll make sure that I go through that setup. Anyway, uh, in regards to the Mishimoto cooler and the radiator, everything is great and uh, pretty happy with that. Pretty happy with the performance and uh, what I'm seeing on the, on the numbers with the dash. So, hope this is helpful for anyone trying to do this setup. Uh, some, you know, things to keep in mind. Thanks.